Welcome to CrushTheStreet.com's weekly market wrap up. Let's get started in the equity sector, which suffered one of the worst weeks in recent memory. With Thursday's market action dropping the benchmark S&P 500 index to 1,833 points, down more than 2% against the prior session. The Dow Jones nearly shed 270 points and is now 1.6% below its January opener. However, the laggard continues to be the NASDAQ, which after suffering a 3% loss in valuation, marks its worst performance since November of 2011. During interday trading, 99% of the NASDAQ 100 index all saw red, indicative of a comprehensively severe reversal in prior bullish sentiment. Reasons for the downtrend include a volatile options expiry season, a mass rotation out of so-called momentum names into venerable value plays, and geopolitical instability. Not surprisingly, gold and silver finally broke away from the short-term doldrums, closing at $13.19 and $20.04 respectively. And recent developments should be long-term bullish for the metals. However, don't overlook Palladium, which closed at the bid at 788 and may launch even higher due to the potential threats of Russian nationalization. On the domestic front, one of the most controversial issues to hit the American corporatist landscape was General Motors' handling of a vehicular defect that is directly tied to the deaths of 12 drivers. In an attempt at damage control and reputation restoral, GM CEO Mary Barra issued a testimony before congressional hearing. Unfortunately, the court of public opinion was not swayed and Barra herself was the subject of a parody skit on Saturday Night Live. But I promise we are investigating the matter fully. Wasn't GM aware of a problem with the Cobalt's ignition switch back in 2006? We're looking into that. <laughs> and what was GM's response when they discovered the problem? We are looking into that as well. At the heart of the matter is a faulty ignition switch, which allows external stimuli such as poor road conditions, a jarring impact, or excessive weight attached to the ignition key to forcefully move the ignition switch out of the run position. The resulting action leads to an engine shutdown in mid-drive, along with many of the safety features that are electronically operated. In response to the confirmed tragedies that were caused by the defect, GM issued a recommendation that car owners should avoid weighing down their key rings with anything more than a key and a fob, according to a Reuters article. However, the contention among government officials and industry watchdogs is that GM knew about this problem much earlier and failed to respond substantively until their customers suffered injuries and fatalities. Very few are going to completely side with GM. The American people have been screwed over by every color of the corporate spectrum, and this appears to be yet another example of white-collar malfeasance. With that said, this is also a classic struggle between government oversight and personal responsibility. An ignition switch is a catalyst, not a coat hanger, and such, it is not designed to handle the weight load of your house keys, your mailbox keys, your titanium alloy flashlight, and whatever else that people dangle on their ignition switch. Unfortunately, the poor choices that some of us make may now result in further government interference that affects us all. And that'll do it for this week's edition. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.